Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of the Golden Age. This is a series that is dedicated to Warhammer Fantasy 8th Edition Battle Reports, and this is Battle Report number 136. It is a 3,000 point battle that's fought between vampire counts as well as lizardmen. Our friend Scream of the Emo is bringing House Von Koss, his 3,000 point vampire counts army, and I'm playing the Lizard of Waz, my 3,000 point lizardmen army. So for those of you guys who are tuning in for the very first time, what ended up happening is that we created a brand new 3,000 point Lizardman army, and what we're doing is we're taking this army through its paces by making it fight against every other army located within our studio's collection. So, so far this army is actually doing quite well with itself with a pretty impressive record so far. Uh, so far the army has been sitting at uh, 6 victories as well as 2 losses, which is actually pretty commendable, all things considered. So what we're going to do is we're going to play some background music real quick. As the music is playing, we'll show you photos of both armies as well as our army rosters. If you want to see exactly what we're bringing for this one, you can pause, take a look at your leisure, or look in the description box down below for further details. So that being said, let's get this battle report on a roll. Krom. I've never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. No one, not even you, will remember if we were good men or bad. Why we fought, or why we died. No. All that matters is that two stood against many. That's what's important. Barlow pleases you, Kram. So grant me one request. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then to hell with you. Assemble the army! So the scenario rules for this one is Battle Line is the most typical game of Warhammer that you play on this channel with standard deployment as well as standard victory conditions. So with the scenario rules over, let's go and talk about battle plans real quick. So here's an overview shot of the entirety of the battlefield. As you can see, we're playing on a 6x4 table. My friend Scream of the Emo is deployed on the far side of the table, and I'm deployed on the near side of the table. And right off the bat, I do have my work kind of cut out for me in this one. And the reason why is because I don't have very many magical attacks that I could use, especially against those two units of Hex Rays that are located vanguarded up right there in the front. Uh, so because I have to well rely on magic in order to take those guys out. At the same time, my opponent also has some really good maneuverability for his army. He has a lot of spectral steeds in his army, so things like his Black Knight's left hand flank, the Calliope Chaos on the right hand flank, uh, so they can kind of swoop in and get me. At the same time, they also have some pretty good powerful combat choices right in the center of his army as well. So what my plan basically to do is to try to rush my opponent as quickly as possible and defeat him because he is playing a vampire counts army so him having the ability to basically just generate uh, more troops over time is a bad thing for me to face against. So I need to go up to him as quick as I can so I can defeat him before his army grows too rapidly. At the same time, he does have a lot of death streaks in his army. He has a, a death, he has a, a terror geist as well as a general arm of scavenge craft that gives him the death streak ability, as well as a ghostly howl from the uh, Calliope Chaos. And Blizzard leadership is not all that great, and the reason why is because of that cold blooded ability. So because it can cause a lot of damage. That's the reason why my buddy Scream of the Emo has the screen name that he does. Uh, because his army does a lot of screaming, so I do have my work cut out for me in that case. So with the battle plan over, let's go and talk about deployment real quick. Alright, so deployment for the Lizards of Waz, starting on the far left hand flank, that character's name is Gatorade, he is a Saurus Old Blood, he's carrying a shield, he's got fencers, blades, glittering skills, and talisman endurance, and he's riding on Powerade, which is a Carnosaur with Blood Roar as well as Loping Stride. Right next to him is a unit called the Jurassic Jousters, a unit of 10 uh, Cold One Riders with Musicians, Santa Bear, Shield, and Spears, and they're riding Cold Ones, and right next to them is a uh, Bulbasaur, which is a Bastilodon equipped with a solar engine. Making up my center are my major uh, infantry units. On the left hand side, there's a unit called the Saurus, which is a unit of 40 Saurus Warriors, Musician and Standard Bearer. They also have spears and shields. And right next to the right hand side, that is the Guacamole Guards. It is a unit of 36 Temple Guards with full command with halberds, light armor, and shields. They also have the Dan Standard Discipline, giving them plus one to their leadership. Now, normally they would not be able to use the General's leadership, except that the General is in the unit, and my General is Kermit the Slan. He's a Slan Mage Priest. He's also the General of my army. He's also my army's Battle Standard Bearer. 
He's uh, got level 4 lore of high magic. He's also got the lore master ability because he has focus and mystery as one of his buffs. He also has harmonic convergence so that way he rolls 3 dice for channeling attempts. And he also got the channeling stab giving him 5 up on those channeling attempts as well. And making on my right hand side is the Karma Chameleons. He's using 24 skinks with full command. They have Lustrian javelins and shields, as well as three Crocs of Gore, equipped with great weapons. And leading that unit are two skink priests. The first one's name is Skink, uh, so sorry, Snarl. Snarl is a level 2 uh, wizard, skink priest from the Lord of Beasts. He has Wisdom's Well, form as well as the Amber Spear. He's packing the Sword of Striking for magical attacks, as well as the Cube of Darkness. And then we also have Slag, my level 1 uh, wizard, who is a skink priest, even the Lord of Heavens. He has the Comet of Cassandora, as well as Dispel and Ruby Dispel Scroll, as well as the Ruby Ring of Ruin, and that makes a deployment here on the right hand side. And located all the way up on the Vanguard, that is a unit called the Charizards, a unit of three Pterodon Riders with Fire Leech Bolas. So now that we're done talking about the deployment for the Wapocalypse uh, for my uh, Wizards of Waz, let's go and talk about the deployment for the Vampire Counts. So now we're on the other side of the table with the Vampire Counts' army, House Von Kost, that's played by my friend Scream of the Emo. On the left hand flick is a unit called the Ghost Knight of Ragun. It is a unit of 10 Black Knights with full command. They have lances, heavy armor, and shields. They're riding skeletal seas with barding, and they also have the Banner of the Barrows that give them plus one to strike uh, in close combat. Right behind them is Volcar, the Beast of Blutfold, who's a Terror Geist. And right next on the right hand side, that unit is called the Ravenous, is a unit of six Crypt Horrors. Making up the center deployment on the left hand side, that is called the Bellfire Carnival, is a unit of 49 Crypt Ghouls with a Crypt Gas, and leading that unit as well as the Army's General, who is Marduk von Koss, the Baron of Drakenfels. He is a Strigoi Ghoul King, he's also the General of this army. He's a level 1 wizard with the lore of vampires, and the spell that he knows is Invocation of the Heck. He's armed with Scab Scrath, which is the magical weapon that gives him Death Streak ability as well as flaming attacks. At the same time, he also got the Dragon Bane Gem for two aboard save against uh, fire attacks. He's also got Aura of Dark Majesty, meaning that his opponents suffer minus one to their leadership. Curse of the Revenant, giving him four up on his wounds. And Summon Creatures of the Night, where he can increase the size of uh, Dire Wolves beyond their starting size. And right next on the right hand side, that unit is called the Walking Dead of San Rame. It's unit of 40 zombies with musician of Standard Bear. And located at unit are two necromancers. In the center, we have Gauntfield of Carrion Crows. He is a level 4 master necromancer with the lore of vampires. He has an invocation to heck Van Hale's Dance Macabre, as well as Hellish Vigor and Resident Dead. He's got a hand weapon, as well as the Book of Asher. And uh, next to him is Sinister Jeffrey, who is a necromancer, is level 2 wizard with the lore of death. He's got Soul Blight, as well as Doom and Darkness, and he's packing a Dispel Scroll. And make up the right hand flank of the deployment. On the left hand side, that is Rolling Bones, which is a corpse cart. And right next to the right hand side is the Calliope of Chaos. Uh, it's a Mortis engine with a Blasphemous Tome upgrade. And make up the forward advance of 12 inches of forward with Vanguard. On the left hand side, that is the Mask of the Black Death, which is unit 5 Hex Race with great weapons and skeletal steeds. And right in the center, that is a unit called the Hounds of Tindalos, which is unit 15 Dire Wolves. And finally, on the right-hand side, we have the Mask of the Red Death, which is a unit of five hex rays with great weapons, as well as skeletal steeds. So now that we got deployed over with, we go directly to the top of turn number one, and both Scream and the Emo roll off our initiative to see which of us will be going first. So we go directly to the top of turn number one, and I imagine you get the initiative on this one. So as you can see in this photo, I move forward. Uh, I don't declare any charges in this first turn, and the reason why is because I don't want to really engage those hex rays too much, because I don't really have a magical attacks to deal with them, so I have to use magical spells in order to take care of that problem. So instead what I decided to do is I decided just to move everything up forward. I march up on the left hand side Gatorade and Powerade, moving up the left hand flank next to those standing stones. Right behind them I also move up the Jurassic Jousters, the Bulbasaur, as well as the Saurus towards those uh, two standing stones on the left hand side as well. Meanwhile I keep the Guacamole Guard as well as the Karma Chameleons exactly where they're located at because that way I can launch magical missiles directly to those two units of Hex Rates. And the last thing I do is I march fly the Charizards flying right over the Hounds of Tindalo so that way they can drop rocks and manage to kill two of those wolves at the same time. And that pretty much makes my move phase for this part. So here's a close-up of Gatorade as well as Powerade moving up along the left hand flank to outflank my opponent hopefully bring the pain onto his main battle line. And here's a close-up of the Jurassic Jousters, the Bulbasaur, as well as the Saurus moving up forward to assault the left-hand side of Scream of the Emo's main battle line. And I do have my cut work a little bit cut off for me. The reason why is because there's a natural funnel and bottleneck between those two standing stones, so I do have to watch that. That's the reason why the Bulbasaur is a little bit forward ahead, so that way my opponent decides to countercharge. He has to run into the Bulbasaur first before he can run into any of my other units. And here's a close-up of the Karma Chameleons, as well as the... Uh, Welcome all the guards stay on the ground so that they can use magical attacks with magic spells against those hex wraiths. And finally, here's also a close-up of my 
Charizard's flying over the Hounds of Tindalos and dropping rocks and killing two of them as well. So the Moon Phase are with, we go directly to the Magic Phase. And unfortunately for me, my Magic Phase wasn't really all that stellar, and the reason why is because my opponent was able to dispel most of the spells I was trying to get off. However, I was able to get out Winston's Wild Form off from um, Snarl, is able to put that directly out to the Karma Chameleon, so now my Karma Chameleons have Strength 3, Toughness 4, which, you know, makes it a little more survivable in close combat, as well as the increase the power of their shooting attacks with their Javelins. And speaking of shooting phases... During the shooting phase, I contrary fire with both the Charizards as well as with my Karma Chameleons, uh, directing their attacks directly into the Hounds of Tindalos. As you see, this fine magic kill uh, four of those guys, which is really awesome as well. Unfortunately for me, though, I am fighting undead, so I don't have to worry about taking panic tests, but, you know, I'll take what I can get at this point. Alright, so from there we go directly to the top of turn number uh, bottom turn number one for the vampire counts, and this photo is taken after the move phase. And as you can see in this photo, the first thing that ends up happening is my opponent screaming the emo declares a charge of the hound of Tindalos. They go charge across the battlefield directly into the Karma Chameleons. I do stand and shoot as a reaction. I drop their number down to four, which is all kinds of awesome. However, the bad part though was that my opponent decided to march up as well. The first thing he did is he actually marched up the mask of the Black Death and the mask of the Red Death uh, right through uh, my unit, the Guacamole Guards. So because I get 10 strength 5 attacks from their Spectral Hunter ability. As you can see in this photo, they managed to kill 9 of my Guacamole Guards, which is really rough. Luckily for me, though, I do pass my Panic Test, so they pretty much stand their ground. As for the rest of his army, uh, he doesn't really do all that much dramatic movement, he just pretty much marches forward. The first thing he does is he march flies a Volcar the Beast of Blue Vault all the way to the left hand side of the battlefield to stare down the left hand flank of Gatorade and Powerade, so that way he can get off that Death Streak ability, which I'm absolutely terrified of. The rest of his army just pretty much moves up forward just a little bit with the Ravenous, as well as the Belfire Carnival, the Walking Dead of San Rame, Rolling Bones, as well as the Calliope of Chaos. Also, it should be noted that the Calliope of Chaos, when he released its Reliquy from its uh, Dark Aura ability, managed to give plus one regen to the Walking Dead of San Rame, as well as to Rolling Bones. And that pretty much makes the move phase for this part. So here's a close-up of the move phase with Volcar, the Beast of Blue Vol, getting ready to unleash its Death Streak ability directly onto Gatorade and Powerade, which I'm not looking forward to, just because uh, my guy only has a leadership value of eight, so it could cause all kinds of problems, especially for the Connors or they've only got like leadership five, so that part's pretty bad. And I forgot to mention the previous slide, I do apologize for this one. Um, my opponent actually did declare a second charge, and that was with the Black Knights of the Knights of her gun. The Ghost Knights of her gun actually declare a charge directly against the Jurassic Jousters and go right through that standing stone and directly into my Cold One Riders. And the reason why he's able to do this is because of the Ethereal Special Rule that they have in terms of movement, so that way they can slip right through solid objects and attack and expose flanks. So I forgot to mention that, I do apologize. And here's a close-up of the Ravenous, as well as the Belfar Carnival, moving up as uh, kind of gingerly forward, so that way they can close the distance between his battle line as well as my main battle line. And here's a close-up of the Walking Dead of San Rame, as well as Rolling Bones, and the Calliope of Chaos. And as you can see, the Calliope of Chaos has given the boosted uh, regeneration uh, buff to both the Walking Dead of San Rame, as well as Rolling Bones. And here's a close-up of the Hounds of Tindalos, charging directly into the Karma Chameleons, so I'm actually looking forward to see how that fight goes. And lastly, here's a close-up of the Mask of the Red Death, as well as the Mask of the Black Death, who used their Soul Hunter ability to basically kind of quarter down the uh, size of the Guacamole card. So that part was absolutely terrifying. So with the movement phase or with, we go directly to the Magic Phase. And during the Magic Phase, my friend Scream the Emo activates the uh, library, Cursed Librarian of Curses, uh, Sinister Jeffrey uses Doom and Darkness, and he actually gets the boosted version of that spell off, or basically targets all units within 24 inches. As you can see, he puts down minus one strength and toughness for the Bulbasaur, the Saurus, as well as for the Charizards, as well as the Guacamole Guards, so that part was tough. And the reason why I was powerless to stop is because my opponent cast it with Irresistible Force, and he actually miscast four on that bad boy. Klaatu, Mirada, <laughs> So because of the large explosive template does go off, managed to kill 11 zombies, so that part was kind of nuts. And to make matters worse, he also puts a wound on Gunfield of Carrion Crows, which is his Master Necromancer. And when he rolled to see exactly what happened to Sinister Jeffrey, he rolled a 2. So because of that, Sinister Jeffrey instantly gets killed and gets sucked into the warp uh, to basically, you know, retrain how to use magic appropriately. So we'll continue on the magic phase, my opponent Scream of the Emo then activates Gonfield the Carrying Crows, who uses the boosted version, the maximum boosted version of Invocation of the Hex, that way it targets all units within 18 inches. And as you can see in this photo, magic bring back every single one of the members of the Hounds of Tindalos that I just magic killed earlier. So now I gotta fight against all 15 dire wolves against my Karma Chameleons. 
And because Invocation of the Heck also targeted the, car, uh, the Rolling Bones, Rolling Bones, of course, uses Vigor and Mortis ability, which means that everything within six inches gets always strike first. So because of that, the uh, Walking Dead Sam Ramey, Rolling Bones, as well as the Calliope of Chaos, all three of those units have always strike first. Now you might be wondering, well, Commander Cheapskate, why did you allow that spell to get off? The reason why it got off is because that spell went off Irresistible and uh, by rolling boxcars on that one. Latu, Marada, <laughs> Scream of the Emo did miscast uh, 7 on that one, so because he does cause some damage, as you can see, not only does he also bring back most of the uh, zombies as well, he lost a couple of more just because of that explosive uh, device that took place, so he did lose some of the newly resurrected zombies he created, but still, pretty, uh, pretty well done magic phase, all things considered. So with the magic phase over with, you go directly to the shooting phase, as you can see in this photo, um, Full car, the Beast of Blue Fall decided to unleash the sound of his people by screaming directly at to uh, Gatorade and Powerade. Managed to kill both of them. That part was absolutely horrific. Uh, I forgot how many hits he got off. I think he managed to get 13 hits off on on uh, Gate Powerade, the uh, Carnosaur. I think he managed to get seven off on directly onto Gatorade. So needs to say, those two guys are currently bleeding from the ears. Their eyeballs have exploded from the awesome scream of rock that is Volcar, the Beast of Blue Fall. So with the shooting phase over, we can go directly to the combat phase between the Karma Chameleons as well as the Hounds of Tendalos. As you can see in this photo, uh, they managed to kill eight, oh, sorry, not eight, nine of my Skink Warriors and the Karma Chameleons, and at the same time I was able to kill seven of theirs as well. Needless to say, I did win this battle because my rank bonus is plus my standard, so because of that, my opponent does lose some more Dire Wolves. When it was said and done after all after combat resolution, I ended up having seven Dire Wolves from the Hounds of Tendalos still fighting against my Karma Chameleons. And of course, I also lost uh, nine of my fighters, so that part was pretty rough. Meanwhile, combat between the Jurassic Jousters as well as the Black Knights actually went pretty well, all things considered. In the end, I was able to win, I believe, by one. So because of that, the Black Knights are still standing their ground, and they lose two fighters overall when it was all said and done. So with the combat phase are worth, you go directly to the top of the turn for the Vampire, uh, for the Lizardmen. All right, so it takes a look at the top of turn number two for the Lizardmen, and this photo is taken after the move phase. And the first thing I do is I declare a charge of the Bulbasaur. The Bulbasaur goes tearing across the battlefield and landing correctly into the right-hand side of the uh, Ghost Knights of her gun. And by doing that, it pretty much opens up the avenue of approach that I can take with my Thesaurus between those two standing stones. So the next thing I do is, of course, I march on my Thesaurus to take their position right there, right next to the Bulbasaur, as well as that standing stone, so that way they can take anything that's going to threaten them head on. At the same time, I also march fly the Charizard directly over the uh, to the left hand side of the Ravenous. And the reason why is because I plan on opening up with their Fire Leech Bolos directly into those uh, Crypt Ghoul Terrors. And hopefully that'll do, because even if one wound makes it through, they lose their ability to regenerate for the rest of the battle. And so that's pretty much the scheme going on there. The next thing I do, of course, is I march up my Guacamole Guards heading directly towards the uh, Walking Dead of San Rome because that unit needs to die as well. Meanwhile, my Carbon Chameleons are still engaged in close combat with the Hounds of Tindalos. And that pretty much makes my deployment for this one. So here's a close of the Bulbasaur getting into a flank attack directly into the Ghost Knights of her gun. At the same time, you can see my Thesaurus are moving up slowly so that way they can uh, get glimpse of support. At the same time, you can see my Charizards in the top getting ready to drop some fiery bombs directly onto the Ravenous down below. And here's a close of the Guacamole Guards making their way directly towards the main battle lines, as well as my Karma Chameleon still gauging close combat with the Hounds of Tindalos. So now that we're done with the move phase, you head directly to the magic phase. And unfortunately for me, my magic phase was pretty lackluster. I wasn't able to get off the spells I wanted to. However, I was able to get off Wiston's Wild Form by Snarl. managed to put it directly on the Karma Chameleon, so now they're back to being uh, just normal plus one strength and plus one toughness, which is all kinds of awesome. So the magic phase is over with, you go directly to the shooting phase. And the shooting phase, my charge starts open up with their flaming attacks directly into the uh, into the uh, Ravenous. Managed to take away the regen save, and I also put a wound on one of the uh, Ravenous, which is all kinds of awesome. So the shooting phase is over with, we go directly to the combat phase. And during the combat phase, my Karmic Chameleons are able to stomp out the very last few remaining Direwolves from the Hounds of Tindalos. So now that pretty much frees up my unit to do what it needs to in order to be successful. Meanwhile, combat over here between the Ghost Knights of her gun as well as Jurassic Joust was absolutely brutal. Uh, in the end, I was only able to kill uh, one member of the Black Knights. However, they were able to kill four of my Jurassic Jousters. Three of those were actually from Killing Blow, so that part was horrific. Unfortunately for me, I lost this combat bad, but I did manage to pass with my uh, Cold Blooded save from my break test. So because of that, we stick around and we're going to go fight for another round. 
So from there, that takes us directly to the top of turn number two for the Vat Power Accounts. As you can see, this photo is taken after the moon phase. And for the most part, my buddy decides to take the offense on this one. The first thing he does, he declares a charge with Volcar the Beast of Blue Vault, who goes flying directly into the left-hand flank of the Jurassic Jousters. So now they're stuck in a huge melee between the Jurassic Jousters, the Bulbasaur, the Black Knights, as well as Volcar the Beast of Blue Vault. At the same time, he also decides to commit the Ravenous and charges the four directly into the source, catching me in close combat in that one. And the last thing, of course, he does, he just kind of moves with the rest of his units like normal. He marches up both the uh, Rolling Bones over to the right-hand side, right from that standing stone, which then opens up the avenue of approach for both the Balefire Carnival as well as the Walking Dead of San Jose, who marches forward to take blocking positions, using those standing stones to protect their flanks. At the same time, he also marches up the Calliope of Chaos, so that way it's within range to open fire with its ghostly howl attack onto my Karma Chameleons. And the last thing that Scream of the Emo does is that he then marches, since he's within range now, he actually has those guys move up their normal moon allowance for the Hex Wraiths from both the Mask of the Black Death and Mask of the Red Death. They just move their normal moon allowance right through the entire back rank of my Karma Chameleons, and they manage to just decimate that unit by killing a bunch of people with that Soul Hunter's ability. So here's a close-up of Volcar the Beast of Blue Fall, charging directly into the left-hand flank of the Jurassic Jousters, so that whole melee is going to be a nightmare now that i got to deal with that Tower Geist. And here's a close-up of the Ravenous, charging directly into the front rank of the Saurus, catching those guys in close combat, so I'm not too worried about this one. i got 40 Saurus Warriors against 6 Crypt Horrors. I'm not too worried about it too much. And here's a close-up of the Bellfire Carnival, as well as the Walking Dead of San Rame, slowly making their way through that gap directly to my main lines. And here's a close-up of Rolling Bones, as well as the Calliope of Chaos. And it should be noted as well, the Calliope of Chaos did use its Reliquary ability, but it rolled Snake Eyes on that one, so its Pulse did not manage to give anybody in their boost to the region or cause any damage, but they do suffer one wound because the double was rolled for the Reliquary. And lastly, here's a close-up of the Mask of Black Death and the Mask of Red Death, moving right through the Karma Chameleons and killing a bunch of my Skink Warriors, which is really, really sad. So, with the move phase over with, we go directly to the Magic phase. And unfortunately for my buddy Scream of the Emo, when he rolled for his magic face, he rolled Twin Snake Eyes. So because of that, there is no magic face with the vampire accounts. And anybody who's ever played Undead before, or played against him for that matter, you know that how important the magic phase really is for vampire accounts, and now he doesn't have one. So with the magic phase, or with it, go directly to the shooting phase. In the shooting phase, Scream of the Emo then opens up with the Calliope of Chaos, unleashing its ghostly howl ability directly off onto my Karma Chameleons. I think managed to kill three of those skink warriors, so that part was kind of sad because, like I said before, Lizardmen don't have really great uh, until, uh, leadership tests, so those death shrieks as well as ghostly howl abilities are just murder on these guys, so that part was pretty difficult. At the same time, uh, his general, Marduk Von Koss, the Baron of Dragonfells, is within range for his D3 ability from Scavscrath, managed to kill another handful of my uh, guacamole guards, so that part was really rough. And at the same time, over here on the left-hand side, uh, Volcar, the Beast of Blue Fall, does his Death Streak ability. It wasn't so impressive. He was able to kill one of my uh, Jurassic Jousters, so that part was kind of rough as well. So with the shooting phase over with, we go directly to the combat phase. So the combat phase ended up being a complete nightmare over here on the left-hand flank for me. In the end, the Black Knights, as well as uh, Volcar, the Beast of Blue Fall, were able to destroy what remained of my Jurassic Jousters. So just like that, they're completely dead. That does free out Volcar, the Beast of Blue Fall, so that way he can pursue forward if he wants to later on. At the same time, the Black Knights do a quick combat reform real quick to face off against the Bulbasaur, so they'll be fighting it out in close combat. Meanwhile, the close combat between the Ravenous as well as the uh, the Saurus was actually pretty good. In the end, I was able to kill two members of the uh, Ravenous, managed to kill those, both those guys and put a floating wound on another one as well. At the same time, he also managed to kill uh, five of my Saurus Warriors as well. Needless to say, I won this combat uh, just because of combat resolution as well, so because of the difference of combat resolution, does pop off the very last member of the back rank of the Ravenous. And just like that, there's only three of those guys left, so that part was absolutely fantastic. So with that being done, we go directly to the top of turn number three for the Lizardmen, and this photo is taken after the move phase, and as you can see in this photo, I decided to commit and hopefully try to destroy my enemy as quickly as I can. Uh, the first thing I do, of course, I declare a charge of the Charizards. The Charizards go directly into the back rank of the Bellfire Carnival, catching those guys in the pincer attack. At the same time, my Guacamole Guards do manage to charge forward directly into the Bellfire Carnival, capturing in a pincer attack, which is all kinds of awesome. At the same time, I don't commit the Karma Chameleons. And the reason why I don't commit the Karma Chameleons in combat is because I plan on using my magical abilities in order to destroy both the uh, Mask of the Red Death as well as the Mask of the Black Death as well. Meanwhile, the Bulbasaur as well as the Saurus is still in close combat with the Ravenous as well as the Black Knights of Fregun. And uh, as you can see, I'm slowly getting enveloped over time. These uh, 
the undead are slowly surrounding me and that part is absolutely terrifying. So I gotta do some quick moving quick and uh, destroy some undead otherwise I might be completely surrounded. So here's a close up of uh, the Bulbasaur still fighting against the Black Knights of Ver the Ghost Knights of Vergun. At the same time there's an awesome shot of my homemade conversion that I did for Volcar the Beast of Blutefold or Terrorgeist. Meanwhile, here's a close-up of the source. We're still engaged in close combat with the Ravenous, so really excited to see exactly how that combat's going to go. And here's a close-up of the Guacamole Guards as well as the Charizard getting and capturing the Belfar Carnival in a pincer attack. And I'm looking forward to see exactly how that combat goes because I really want to see exactly how my guys can do it against a huge horde formation of Crypt Ghouls. And finally, here's a close-up of the Karma Chameleons looking at the back ranks of the Mask of the Black Red Death as well as the Black Death getting ready to unleash magic upon them. And speaking of which... In the magic phase, they able to unleash uh, the Amber Spear as well as the Ruby Ring of Ruin directly onto both units. And as you can see in this photo, it was absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry, not the Amber Spear. I apologize. I used the um, uh, the uh, Arcane Vessels ability. There we go. I use that to get Soul Quench off uh, directly onto the uh, Hex Wraith. So in case you guys aren't familiar, what ends up happening is that with Arcane Vessel, what ends up happening is that the Skink Priest can actually give line of sight to magic missile attacks for uh, the uh, Slam Mage Priests who are up ahead, who's currently engaged in close combat with the uh, with the Crypt Ghouls. So because they was able to use um, Snarl and Slag in order to get those spells off, uh, Snarl basically opens fire with the uh, Soul Quench directly onto the right hand side of the Mask of Black Death. Managed to kill four of those X-Rays, which are all kinds of awesome. And then I use Slag's uh, Ruby Ring Ruin to blow up the last two X-Rays on the Mask of Black Death on the left hand side as well. Unfortunately, these guys will not panic because they're undead, but still, it's a lot less hex rays I gotta deal with, which is all kinds of awesome. So, continuing on the magic phase, I did swap out one of my uh, my high elf magic, my high magic spells, which was Arcane and Fortune. I did try to cast that early off in the beginning of the battle against uh, Gonfield of Carrion Crows, but unfortunately, that spell didn't go off so because I traded for Regrowth from the Lore of Life. And as you can see in this photo, I managed to bring back a couple more of my Guacamole Guards. Was well, all kinds of awesome as well. So bringing back the dead no longer does an undead thing. Lizardman could actually do it as well. So the magic phase we're with, we skip the shooting phase because I can't shoot at ethereal targets, and we go directly to the combat phase. And as you can see in this photo, the source had no problem whatsoever finishing out the very last of the ravenous. The ravenous did manage to kill another handful of my source warriors, but I got source warriors for days, so it's not that much of a big deal in that part. Meanwhile, combat between the Guacamole Guards and the Charizards against the Belfar Carnival was an absolute massacre. I managed to kill 12 of those Crypt Ghouls was all said and done. And in exchange, they're able to kill a couple of my guys as well. What ends up happening is that my opponent screaming the emo declares a challenge with Marduk Von Koss. And because my cover of the slam is a bad idea to get him in close combat, I decided to answer the call with my champion for my, uh, for my Temple Guards. Not only does... Uh, Marduk Von Koss kill him, he kills him three times over, so he managed to get four points from that. Also managed to kill two of my Guacamole Guards, but I was able to kill 12 of those guys. In the end, I won this combat by a landslide, and of course my opponent has to take instability tests because of it. In the end, he loses a bunch of Crypt Ghouls at the same time, and because of that, he decides to do a combat reform. He does pass his leadership test, as you can see here, he put his Crypt Ghouls in a column formation, and he only has 22 left of those guys. So, just like that, I was able to cut that unit down in half, which is all kinds of awesome. And at the same time, I was able to kill one of the Black Knights from the Ghost Knights of the Gun with uh, with my Bulbasaur. My Bulbasaur is actually quite uh, impressing me right now. He's actually with, uh, withstood all the attacks from the Ghost Knights of the Gun at the same time holding them up and also killing one of them as well. So kudos to the Bulbasaur. He must have been hearing all the smack I was talking about him in my after action report, saying so he's probably stepping up for the first time. So that part is amazing. Which takes us directly to the bottom of turn number three for the vampire accounts, and this photo is taken after the move phase, and as you can see in this photo, once again, uh, disaster strikes for the most part. The first thing that ends up happening is that my opponent decides to declare a charge of the Volcar, the Beast of Blute Vault. The Terror Geist goes crashing into the back ranks of the source, so that part is kind of rough. At the same time, uh, he does not declare a charge for anything else. What he does, he does a quick, uh, swift reform real quick with his zombies from the Walking to the San Remain. Those guys turn 90 degrees and face off directly against the right-hand flank of the uh, Guacamole Guards, which is absolutely terrifying because uh, that can catch me in a pincer attack, so that would be kind of rough. At the same time, he also marches up, no, sorry, not marches up, he moves up the Mask of the Black Death and the Red Death to go once again through my Karma Chameleons and killing some of those guys using their Spectral Hunter's ability. He then moves up the Belfar, the uh, Rolling Bones, as well as the Calliope of Chaos in order to put themselves in blocking positions with my Skinks. And then finally, the Bulbasaur still engaged in close combat on the left-hand side with the Ghost Notes of the Gun. 
So here's a close-up of uh, the Bulbasaur still fighting against the Ghost Knights of Gun, as well as the Terror Geist, of Volcar the Beast of Blutvold, going right behind the back ranks of my Thesaurus, so that part is terrifying. At the same time, here's a close-up of the Bellfire Carnival still stuck in a pincer attack between the Charizards as well as the Guacamole Guards. And as you can see, they did a quick reform on the right-hand side there with the Walking Dead of San Rame, getting themselves set up for a beautiful flank charge and horde formation against my uh, Temple Guards, which is actually terrifying. And here's a close-up of Rolling Bones as well as a Calliope of Chaos getting in blocking positions for my Karma Chameleons, as well as a couple of them being killed by the Spectral Hunters of the uh, two units of Hex Rates. Luckily for me though, I did pass my Panic Test, so I'm standing my ground, but that unit is slowly going away, and that's pretty terrifying, all things considered. So with that, we go directly to the Magic Phase, and my opponent decides to use his General Marduvon Kost to cast the boosted version of Invocation to Heck. He does get that spell off Irresistible Force. Unfortunately for him though, he miscasts three on that one. Klaatu, Marada, <laughs> Now you might be wondering why the heck did he do that? And the reason why he did that is because he was trying to increase the rank of the bring back some miniatures from the Ghost Knights of Gun to finish off the Bulbasaur. And unfortunately, he did manage to bring back uh, one of them. He rolled his D6, he rolled a 1, so because I brought back two members of the Black, uh, the Black Knights from the Ghost Knights of Gun. But, he does cause a cataclysmic destruction to take place in his Crypt Ghouls. So as you can see, the explosion does go off. It does manage to kill eight of my Temple Guard. At the same time, though, I do manage to protect uh, a couple of my 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 Kermit the Slant as well, as well as my Charizards. I actually avoid that destruction of all kinds. At the same time, as you can see, it also increases the size of the zombie unit to 10 more guys. So now that unit of 40 zombies is now 50 zombies. And because it was in range of the Cli of the Rolling Bones, it triggered its Vigor Mortis ability. So now the zombies, as well as the... Uh, what you call it, as well as the as well as the rolling bones have plus one to their uh, always strike first for their abilities as well. So, and to make matters worse, of course, my opponent's general does get sucked in the warp and is instantly killed, which is all kinds of awesome for me. So there he is, Marduk von Kass, the Strigoi king, the Baron of Drakenfels, getting sucked into the warp because he tried to help out his army, which is all kinds of awesome because that means at the end of this turn, my opponent has to take a stability test and let the chaos reign. So with the magic phase over, they go directly to the shooting phase. In this case, the uh, Volcar the Beast of Blue Fall unleashes with his Death Shriek ability. And instead of my ears bleeding this time around, my ears are only ringing because he managed to only kill two of my Source Warriors. He pretty much flubbed his rolls on that one, so not much really happened of it. But still, you know, that's still pretty terrifying, all things considered. And pretty much the same thing happens over here on the right-hand side with the Calliope of Chaos opening with his Ghostly Howl ability. Only managed to kill one of my Skinks, so... That part was pretty awesome, all things considered as well. I do pass my panic check, so my guys are still sticking around, so that part's kind of nice. So the magic phase over with, we go directly to the combat phase. And in the combat phase, my Guacamole Guard had no problem whatsoever finishing off the last of the Bellfire Carnival, as well as with the Charizard, so because of that unit gets completely destroyed, I do combat reformers with the... Uh, with my uh, Guacamole Guards, as well as my Charizard to face off against the Zombie Horde that's coming my way on the right-hand side, so that part was pretty cool. Unfortunately, though, the attacks between the uh, Volcar, the Beast of Blutfold, as well against my Thesaurus was not all that great. Uh, the Beast of Blutfold was able to kill five on my Thesaurus, and my Thesaurus were not able to do anything back to Volcar, the Beast of Blutfold, so that part was pretty tragic. But I do manage to, I do lose this combat by a landslide, but I do manage to actually stick my landing on my break test, so my guys aren't going anywhere. So instead, I do a combat reform real quick to first face 180 to face against Volcar, the Beast of Blue Fold, so that way I can bring my full mass of my attacks directly against the Terra Geist. Meanwhile, combat over here on the left-hand side didn't really go much of anywhere. My opponent was unable to wound the Bulbasaur, and I wasn't able to do anything back to them. So because of my opponent does win by one because he has a standard bearer, but I passed my break test, and once again, the Bulbasaur is actually showing itself to be a very effective tar pitting unit, so nicely done. So the combat phase over with, we go directly to the instability phase because my friend's army, my friend's uh, general died. So because of that, now we have to take instability tests for all the units, which means they all need to take leadership tests. And for every point that they miss that leadership test by, they lose that many miniatures from that unit. So when it came to the Ghost Knights of Gun with the instability test, uh, they lose two of their members from that one because they failed the leadership test. So that part was epic. Unfortunately for my opponent, Volcar the Beast of Bluefall really flubbed his rolls on that one, so because of that, the uh, Terror Guys just atomizes and disintegrates back into dust right before the Thesaurus, so that part was really, really cool because I had no way of dealing with that uh, Terror Guys. That thing was terrifying. And at the same time, the Calliope of Chaos, it dies. Same thing with Rolling Bones, as well as the Mask of the Red Death and the Mask of the Black Death, which is all kinds of awesome. 
In fact, the only dude that didn't actually suffer from the instability test was the Walking Dead of Sam or May, and the reason why is because they have a Master Necromancer who passes leadership tests on that one as well. And that pretty much ends the instability phase for the vampire counts. At this point of the battle report that my friend screaming at email realizes there's no way in heck he's going to win because the only thing he has left is a unit of zombies as well as a partial unit of black knights. So because of that he decides to surrender the game and netting another victory for the Lizardmen. So that being said ladies and gentlemen we're going to direct to the after action report because this battle report is now officially over. That's it man. Game over man. It's game over. Sure I could have stayed in the past. Could have even been king. But in my own way, I am king. Hail to the king, baby. All right, folks, that takes directly after action report for this one. So the after action report is part of the battle report. We talk about what went well, what went poorly, and what we can learn the next time that we do battle. This is the after action report for the Golden Age Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report number 136, and this one ended a victory for yours truly. In the end, I was able to score 2,358 victory points, while my opponent was able to score 956 victory points. For my losses, I lost Gatorade and Powerade, as well as the Jurassic Jousters. Scream of the Emo, however, lost Marduk Von Koss, the Baron of Drakenfels, Sinister Jeffrey, the Librarian of Curses, the Bellfire Carnival, the Hounds of Tindalos, Rolling Bones, the Ravenous, Mask of the Black Death, Mask of the Red Death, the Calliope of Chaos, and Volcar, the Beast of Blue Fold. So I'm not going to lie, I got extremely lucky in this battle. Scream of the Emo's dice really betrayed him in the magic phases in this battle. Uh, he suffered one round of no magic at all, which is a death sentence for Vampire Counts Army. And finally, Marduk Von Koss also getting blown up and stuck into the warp really saved me in that battle. If that wasn't for the case, uh, I would have passed, basically lost this one. And the reason why is because his army had a test for instability, and a lot of his powerful units were getting destroyed from their lack of leadership. So that part was really, really crazy. So like I said before, earlier in the battle, as you guys saw, you can see how the undead were slowly surrounding my army. And if that was the case, I would have been totally screwed at that point because they would have surrounded me and just chopped me up to pieces. Um, I have to admit, the Blasphemous Tome being from the Calliope of Chaos combined with the Book of Asher is a very powerful combination. It gives Gumfield of Carrion Crows a plus 7 on his lore of vampires casting. He gets 4 base for being a level 4 wizard, 2 up from the uh, Blasphemous Tome, plus one more for the Book of Asher, unstoppable. This traditionally is a very good combo, and the only problem though is that his dice really weren't, really weren't cooperating with him on this one, so that part was kind of nice. Now, as for the Bulbasaur, I guess he finally heard of all my smack talk that I've been giving to about him in the battle reports because he actually held an entire unit of Black Knights all alone on himself, so because of that, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Bulbasaur staying power, so I guess I'm going to have to keep him in the list now just because he impressed me in this battle report and I really don't want to shelve him, especially since he's doing a really good job for me as well. And like I said, one of the best things about this battle report is I really love the cold-blooded special rule for the uh, van, uh, for the Lizardmen. This really helped me uh, start some of the effects of terror as well as fear in this battle report that I usually would have to face against when playing against vampire accounts. So that part was really, really nice as well. And like as always, this was an excellent game against an awesome opponent and as always, I am looking forward to the rematch. Currently, the Lizardman army right now is standing at 7 victories and 2 losses, which is actually really, really good. And of course, we will continue taking this army through its paces by having to fight all the armies in our studio's collection. So that's good to do for this week, guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us, as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good to do for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out, and stay classy.